Looks like he's been in the gym at least a little bit. Check out those stats here, as we can see. Oh, Gua, five years older, and he does have a substantial height advantage. The record, however, is identical. That's five foot four. One meter 63. Yeah. You know, I want to see that face off. I, I, oh no, we won't even have time Ooh. for that. Getting Very quick right start. To it. Yeah, getting right to it. And we're seeing some of that improved striking from Gua. I like that straight right that he fired off right away. Because like you mentioned in the walk in Selyang, we know exactly what Gua wants to do and where he wants to bring this fight eventually. But as we oftentimes say, if you want to become a great champion, you need to uh, step up your game in every aspect of the game. So if you're bad at striking, you got to get better at striking. So, of course, when you do get better at striking, you want to showcase it. You want to show it to the world. And that's what Gua did in the first uh, 40 seconds. Now I'm back to uh, maybe a better positioning for him. Body to body. Feeling the power, feeling the sweat. And maybe uh, positioning himself to uh, weaken his opponent. Maybe take him down. That's uh, his goal. Yeah, he does have one underhook. Not able to do anything with it thus far, though. And I do think that McNulty is very close to spinning out of this position here. He's calming also his opponents. He's just trying to control him, basically. Nasty knee. The answer immediately by uh, McNulty. Doing the same thing, just show him, showing Gua that he can do it too. Yeah, take that defense holding up for the Irishman because we know exactly what Gua wants to do. He wants to get this fight to the canvas. McNulty denying him so far. And he's still sticking with that wizard on his right arm which is probably preventing Gua from getting the proper leverage he needs. And now McNulty should probably separate because he doesn't want to be caught in the clinch with a submission artist like Gua here. He flipped it for a second and then Gua took back the lead now, putting the pressure with the, the back of his opponent. McNulty managing to create a, a little bit of distance going down and he's the one taking down Gua. But he's being caught in a nasty, nasty headlock oh. with an angle that's not really nice for uh, the Irishman. Oh, that, I think that was a bit of a tactical error there for McNulty not to separate because, sure, he managed to get out of first a guillotine and then uh, it looked like a, I don't know, a mortified darts perhaps from the side, but now he's got Gua right on top of him with half the round left to go. And we know how, uh, how often and how quickly Gua can finish fights in this position. But I'm impressed by the calm of Gua. I mean, uh, he knows he's a dangerous man. He's not in panic mode. Even the, from the first second that this bout started, you cannot see any emotion. Almost like a robot fighting, just doing his job. Because he knows he's very confident in his skills. He's taking his time to exit that left arm. There you go. And now he's back on the attack. Almost using the cage uh, as a tag team partner by pushing uh, the head of his opponent. Limiting his uh, defense. Oh, just at that moment, that where that's where he explodes with that uh, attempt, the triangle like attempt. A little bit sloppy, but uh, with just an armbar. Yep. This is a very tough position to get it from Bo because he can't really extend properly the way that he would need to, utilizing his upper body in the same way. I mean, Gua very well versed in grappling. I don't think he's in any real danger right now. No, but it's also, I, I think the, the message that you're sending, that you're not completely lost on your back. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're just showing Gua that, okay, I may not be as talented as you in the grappling uh, side of things, but uh, I still got some tools, so just be careful. But he's focusing on that right arm. He's trying to explode. He's still got 50 seconds, so. Trying to pop his uh, right arm. Gua is just a, Pushing with that knee, just trying to get away. And he's trapped the right arm of McNulty now, so yep. I think there's any submission threat that might have been there is basically gone now. Mm. Oh, a bit of an adjustment. He's not letting go. McNulty is just hanging to that arm like it's the last uh, piece of meat on earth. 
Does not want to let it go. It, I wonder if, you know, if it's a wise move though, because he doesn't want to burn himself out looking for a submission that he's clearly not going to get in this position here. Unless he can get his legs extended, then there's basically no submission. Too threat. late. It's too late in this round anyway. Hey. Uh-oh. Oh. Is it? Is it? <laughs> that was not a good idea by Gua because, you know, when you slam your opponent, if you miss, I mean, if you don't knock him out, you can actually solidify the... Uh, the fact that the uh, the arm bar is going to be even more pressure. Yeah, exactly. That's a, so, a common mistake. But he did it right on the buzzer. So, okay, he's safe for now. Yeah, and, and considering how well versed he is with grappling, I'm pretty sure that it was just, you know, he wanted to give a crowd a little bit, uh, a little uh, some extra entertainment perhaps. Didn't work. I didn't hear the pop. <laughs> I didn't hear the pop from the elbow or from the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> no pop what's, or from champagne bottles. Either. Oh, yes. Of course, uh, let, let, it, let, re, let us remind to the world that we are in Reims. So Reims is champagne country. This is the name of the region, and that's where this uh, delicious beverage comes from. There you have it. If you want to visit this place, you got to go to a lot of uh, underground caves and maybe have a few tastes, tastings here and there. Mm -hmm. It's a good place to visit. Hey, Only a couple of hours away by car from Paris. So you know what to do next time you come in with a beautiful lady. You know, going. Okay, let's go to the Vines. Let's go drink some champagne. You know where to go. Celia and Verini working for the Board of Tourism by the <laughs> sounds of things. <laughs> okay, let's go round two. Hey! I think it was great timing because the impact was not, I mean, the power was not huge. Yeah. It, that, that kick just uh, made McNulty fly away. <laughs> it, I, th I think it was just basically perfect timing that he managed to get him off balance the way that he did, but... Now, McNulty actually in a pretty decent position here, lacing his opponent's legs together. And he could advance to a strong position here. Trying to get now. Yeah, trying to get in the guard, didn't work now. Oof, knee to the body, that's legal. And I like seeing that creativity. A lot of times, fighters will forget the knees to the body on the grounded position, and why not? Sure, just because you can't knee the head doesn't mean that you can't knee other valuable uh, positions either. It's funny, we were selling uh, Gua as a killer in wrestling, and uh, as usual, McNulty wants to show to the world, okay, I can do it too. And he's the one sticking to uh, the body of, uh, of Gua. He's the one trying those uh, those takedowns, he does not want to let it go. Can you imagine? And Gua almost disdainful for what's being thrown his way right now. It looked like he was talking to somebody in the crowd for a little while. Doesn't seem... Uh-oh, changing levels. No. There, ooh, he tried it again. Of course, the experience of Gua. Refusing to go down, keeping his balance. He should show him how to do. You can manage to get me down three times in a row, but yeah, for me, it's way easier. A little trip and a fall. Yep, he managed. Um, that counts. That counts as a takedown. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was, it was a solid outside trip. Or was it inside, perhaps? But now look at this. He is setting up perhaps the beginnings of an arm triangle choke here. It's not the most traditional position, but Guan knows what he's doing. Nice landing a short elbow there as well, giving the Irishman a little extra something to think about. And there's plenty of time to work down this position, and these yeah. elbows are softening up. What well, may be a very tight submission that awaits Neon Belly and step nice. Step by step, inch by inch, and now he's in the full mount position. And Leo Gua can have a lot of fun in the next two minutes. Oh my God, with that tremendous ground and pound, and this one's gonna be stopped. I don't see McNulty surviving. I think oh. it's just, yeah, I don't know, no, no, just, uh, I think it's just a matter of time. Let's see how long he's gonna survive, but look at, I mean, look at his face. Deep breath from McNulty, and Gua is super confident. Oh, I thought he was going to stay in the same position. No, 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 no. Switched it up. Well, I mean, McNulty did at least manage to, to get back to full guard, which is going to definitely make it easier for him to survive this position. Mm. 
Good elbows by McNulty on the on the back. Still got 90 seconds to go in this uh, second round. And again, while just slicing through his opponent's guard like a hot knife through butter. He's going to use some of his elbows now to get McNulty's attention away from his legs. And then that is when Gua is going to slide out into side control. And then we'll eventually see him get back to mount. That's why I'm very sure that's what he's planning on doing. The domination of Gua continues. Blocking now the head and the arm of his opponent. I thought he was going to take side control, but he stopped. Still in the guard. This is the flyweight division, and uh, it's only 56 kilos, but I mean, this guy must weigh a ton just being on you. Well, especially a good grappler knows how to distribute his weight in the most efficient of ways where it's the least taxing for him and the most taxing for his opponent to carry. Going back to the ground and pound now. Waking up the crowd because they want to see some hard impact. Oh, a nice up kick again. Coming back with a punch. 10 seconds if McNulty survives round number two. He's defending himself with those uh, short elbows. Aiming for the uh, the bald head of, uh, of Gua. Hey! That came after the buzzer. Well, Sebastian, can I tell you something? I apologize. I really thought McNulty was not going to survive this, the two-minute mark, but he did, so I hey, apologize for what I said. That, that Irish toughness, it's, uh, it is quite legendary, but I mean, despite that, I still think McNulty, he's got he's to gotta make up for some lost ground now because that was not a good round for him. He got too comfortable in a position where his opponent had a clear advantage. Where we saw him get the legs kicked out from under, uh, from under him. See, that's the timing. That, that, was, that was the very early in this round. With that uh, great shot, middle kick by Watt, who made his opponent lose his balance for a second. And then it was uh, mostly, mostly done on the ground. Yeah, I mean, as soon as it got to the ground, it was one-way traffic, and it was Wa in the driver's seat, so. We definitely saw clear evidence of why he is so feared on the ground. And McNulty, I think he's got to keep it on the outside now. He, he, that's what he did initially, sort of the first minute or so on the first round. And I thought he did a great job of keeping that distance and fighting on the outside. Then he got dragged in clinch distance. And, oh, and he eats a nice straight right there. And again, goes for a takedown. I'm very surprised at that. But the problem for him is his height also. If I mean, if the numbers that were given earlier are, the, are real, even though six inches does seem a, a bit too much. But I mean, if it is the case, of course it's going to be a problem. His reach is going to be uh, problematic. He's not going to be able to touch Gua at all. That's why maybe his only solution is to try to attack the legs and uh, maybe work on the ground, because on the ground we're all the same size, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, sure, but... Then again, it's hard to find a division lower in flyweight. And Adam Weight. Adam Weight. <laughs> yeah, not a lot. There's not a lot of male Adam Weights out there. And I mean, Henry Cejudo, he was like, what, like four feet tall, and he managed to be UFC <laughs> champion. So I mean, you can do it. You just have to adapt to to your opponent and adapt to your division. Interesting, though, we are seeing McNulty on the offense here on the ground. Could potentially. He's almost in kind of like a three-quarter-ish mount. And now, now half guard instead. Well, he's playing with fire, is the Irishman here, because this is a, a dangerous position okay, to stay in for but too Sebastian, long. Okay, what's the other solution? What will you do? I like the way he was fighting on the outside initially in the first mm. round. I think he should stick to that. I mean, an overhand right is an overhand right, no matter how, how tall or short you are. Also, the other question is that even if he's comfortable on the ground, even if, what's the point? He's not going to win that way. Yeah. So he's just going to, you know, just sweat for three minutes, three more minutes and uh, just get a decision. Maybe that's his goal tonight. Maybe his goal was to survive. I don't know. 
Oh, we're getting a warning for activity there from the referee. And that's the thing, once they are on the ground, the Knoti is having a much harder time scoring noticeable offense, whereas, wow, he could basically land what he wanted to with pretty decent efficiency. Wah slithering his way back to his feet, step by step. Now he's on his ass, but uh, still got a long way to go. He's looking to uh, gaining back the control of this one. McNulty using his head very good in his position here. I mean, that is something that is at times forgotten in graphics, Ooh. the use of the head. Yeah, almost had that. Yeah, butterfly sweep potential there from McNulty, uh, sorry, from Gua. He's coming back on his feet. And of course, McNulty trying to quiet him down. That front face lock and now moving to the side, maybe grabbing, there you go, trying to grab the neck. And Gua is back on his feet. There you go. All right. Well, Took him a couple of minutes, but he's back. Yeah, perhaps a little too long for comfort. Uh, I think he, he will have to crank up the heat the moment they separate here. Nice spin there, and he... There you go. Setting up now. McNulty on that single leg, switches to a double. Man, he's, he's really, really struggling with the takedowns, though, sorry. No, you're right, you're right, but he wants to, I mean, he, He's struggling, but he's uh, insisting. He wants to prove to the world, okay, I, I, I want to take it. I want to take down a wrest, uh, like a, a hardcore wrestler. That's that's basically what he wants to do. That's his win tonight. And a guillotine attempt uh -oh. here from Gua with one yeah, minute. Right in front of us. Right in front of us. McNulty in a yeah, very dangerous position. He's suffering here, turning, turning around, trying to alleviate the pressure, and Gua is uh, feeling it. He could see the excitement in his eyes. He knew that the finish was a possibility. Yeah, that was, had, had not McNulty made that adjustment and ended up a little bit more on his side, then it probably would have been over. Come on, come on, come on. 30 seconds to go now. 35. I mean, the guys are like inches away from uh, our uh, commentary table. And you're seeing the difference when one yeah. fighter has top control and everyone else. Look at that, the grappler lets his opponent Come up. On. Oh! And again, McNulty back with a takedown attempt. I'm very surprised at that. It's a question of honor, I think, for McNulty. I think it's a question of honor. He wanted to survive and he wanted to take down the man that was impossible to take down. That's why he insisted so much. Maybe he, he understood, he knew that there was no chance for him to actually win it. Yeah. And uh, that was like a personal victory for him. He tried and tried and tried, showed a lot of heart. I don't think the heart's gonna pay off tonight with a win though. I mean, that's the thing, moral victories don't go on your record, so. Sure, I mean, yeah, he did get a takedown and he did manage to not get submitted, but it was just night and day when they were on the ground. You could see the ease with which Gua handled every single situation. And the calm. Yeah. The calm. The, was, I mean, he was like looking over to his team. He was listening attentively to what they were saying. He was taking in their, their coaching. It was just night and day completely. Here we see that guillotine here, the power guillotine. Honestly, that was tight. Even, it, yeah, it, that's not an ideal position, but that was incredibly tight, I can tell you that. That was right in front of us in the last minute of the match. And it was there once he managed to get past the knee and onto his side. And then he was, round. Yeah, then he was out of danger pretty much. But before that, he was in hot water. Yeah. The guys went the distance with this uh, second pro bout of the main card of this uh, Hexagon 16 event. 2024 being a, a great year for the uh, organization. And this is only a start. Good things are coming up. Winner by unanimous decision, Leopold Gouin.